And there you have it, the closing bell of the New York Stock Exchange capping off another week of trading on Wall Street. The Dow taking a bit of a dive, down more than 350 points. The tech-heavy Nasdaq is down by about one and a half percentage points. The S&P is down about one and a, qu- one and a quarter percent. Now, the big economic story today was the August jobs report. 315,000 jobs were added last month. That's slightly below expectations, and that's down 211,000 from July's jobs report. Dan Ricciardo joins me now. He's a finance professor at the University of San Diego. Dan, always great to have you. First off, let's talk about this. The jobs numbers come out this morning. The markets are up around 100 points, but around noon, they started to fall into the red. What, What took place today? Yeah, hi, Michael. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, Good news is bad news sometimes when we talk about the markets. It sounds crazy, but it's true. So on on balance, the job report was actually pretty good. We had good numbers. They weren't overly good, which means the Federal Reserve would be even more aggressive raising interest rates, but they weren't terrible. So they were sort of right down the middle. Let's call it good news. And the market looked at that good news and said, this is bad news because it means, you guessed it, higher interest rates. Yeah, and that's on a lot of people's mind right now. Uh, How do you think these job numbers are going to impact the Federal Reserve's decision on raising interest rates? Uh, No question, we're still going north on interest rates. Here's why. You know, Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, just the other day, as you know, said, expect more pain for both businesses and consumers. What that means in Fed speak is you and I are going to pay more for money. The price of money is going up. That's interest. And that means the economy will ultimately have to slow down. Why? Because the end game is to try to get inflation under control. So that's the math equation, if you will, that the Fed is working on right now. More pain ahead for consumers. Dan, let's talk inflation. The August Consumer Price Index comes out in less than two weeks. Where do you see inflation heading? It'll be down, um, for, if for no other reason, because the price of gas is down over the last month or so. So I think we're beyond the peak of inflation. Now, let's be careful, Michael. That doesn't mean that a box of mini wheats is going to cost less in a few weeks. What it means is that the pace of the increase is going to slow down. So we're still going to have inflation. Prices are still going to go up. But that trajectory, we think, is finally going to bend a little bit more in the favor of consumers. That will be good news, although not enough good news for the Fed to put the brakes on just yet. Dan Ricardo, thanks for breaking down the numbers. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Michael.